All right. We start off with the floor. Looks like it's kind of rectangular-ish, regular-ish. All right, so now if we want to make ourselves a wall, we're going to choose this right here. Make this a little bit bigger. And if we have a window, that won't be difficult as well. Matter of fact, let's just make a fake window right now. So as you know, if you right click, you go to faces. And if you do a shift greater than, it grows your selection. Just to show you how that works again. I'll get you this. So grow selection is if I choose one face, shift greater than, it grows it to the next selection. So for this right here, I'll just choose this back face. Shift greater than. It doesn't need to be thin for you to do this. It can be big too. I'm just going to delete this. Now, if I wanted to make a window, I would go like this and I would get my knife tool. So I'm holding down control. Let's just say for whatever reason, I want to make two windows. What you can do is you can right click, delete, delete. And then we can do a control E for extrude. And we can just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And that's how you make a window. And then if you wanted to actually like put the a piece of glass in there, all you do is just take a cube and, or we could even extract those faces or you could just take another one of these and kind of scale it down. Let's do that real quick. I can right click vertex. Sometimes it's a lot easier to work with these vertex. Get this one right here. Let me press four. Space by space bar. We have just make ourselves a thin little plane. This net's so important now. I'm just showing you can't do it. Let's go to vertex. Now, one of the things in here, it has like a little uh, shelf that looks like L-shaped shelves. It's gonna make one of those real fast. And it's basically like kind of like the same process. So I would make myself a cube. Scale it out, scale it out. This. What I can do is I want to see in a situation like this, I want to put it on that wall. Let's say uh, I want to make the shape first, but let's say I just want to see the shape. I'm just going to click on this right here for isolate selection and we'll have this. And it'll be a similar uh, process. And I'll just highlight these faces. I could do the greater than, but sometimes this works even better. So it looks like two L's. I'll just go ahead and grab this. Click this one right here. This right here. This one right here. I'll just do this, 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 this. All right, press Q to quit. I'm gonna delete this one. I'll delete these two, shift, delete this, 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 this. So delete those, then I'll delete this one. So now I have this, right? 
and depending on how deep you want these to go, you can just adjust it with the vertices. These edges up here don't really matter, but I mean, it won't really affect us too much, but if you did want to clean it up or delete one of them, you know what it is, you just select it. And then you do a shift right click, delete edge. Always delete edges with delete edge. So this right here, I'll do control E and I'll just drag it out like this. Perfect. I can have this regular style, but for objects like this, it's always better. Or it always looks nicer if you select all these edges, shift right click, do a bevel edge. Fractions of, I mean, not fraction. Segment to two or more. Let's just say I'll put it on three for this. The fraction kind of tight. Now we see the difference between this and this, right? And now if we want to just like it before, make it bigger, we just grab all these points on one of the edges, one of these selections. And this is how you would control it. You can grab this one right here. Nice. So as you can see, the light rolls off of this because of the bevel, and this is kind of harsh. So this particular kitchen has two of these. So I'll just take this one, control D, flip it like this, E to rotate, hold down J. I'm sorry, hold on J. Get the increments, line it up, space bar, space bar. So you have something like this. So I'm just going off the reference I have. Unisolate it. So we got right here. Let's select both of them. Let's see what happens. Uh, see if I scale them like that together. It's going to be. Um, it's going to kind of mess it up a little bit. Which, depending on what you're doing, you know, you can kind of just say, "All right, I'll just take this one and place it down here." That's just a personal preference. Or we can group them. Put them in a group. So select both of them. Both of these, control G, L, fills. Then we can press this to center the pivot, place them on the wall. I already got that. When it comes to some cabinets, I'll just grab myself a cube for space bar, space bar. Well, I'll also do it in here. So I just like to scale it up, kind of get the general sh size of the shape. Go like this. Looking good. So this one has like a stove sticking out. And if you all get to something like this, um, of course, I'll help you make it. So it's looking like this a little bit. Just let me duplicate this, Control D, because it looks like it's the top part as well. I'll grab these vertexes, drag them down. You know what I'll do? I just want to hide this wall because it's a little bit distracting for me. So select these right here, and I'll just press H. Now, let's say I want to make a cutout for this stove. I can just go like this. Now, if I want it to be even, so the top I'm kind of controlling by myself with the insert edge loop, which is this. But if I wanted to make a hole for it, I just select this, Control E for extrude, go to offset, kind of bring it in. Actually, I'll do this two different ways. Just show you. Control D. So we can do it like this, grab that face, control E, go to offset, bring it in, then press G and then push it in like this. This could be for like a shelf too, I guess. Um, 
And this in particular is for the stove. We can cut out the hole like that, or we can do this, shift right click, go to insert edge loop, double click on this. And let's say I want two, let's say I want four, right? Click on this right here, press Q to quit, and then double click, shift, double click this, and then press R to scale. So we can something like this. as well. And then let's say if we want this top and this bottom to be even, we can just um, press G to repeat the tool. Click right here. So we have this, Q to quit, shift, shift. So now we have this. What we can do is select this and do a shift right click, extrude face, push this in. So it does the same thing, just in a different way. But we can also do something like this. We can take these faces, shift, 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 and then do a control E, kind of pull them out. So we have ourselves like a nice little lip right there. And let's say this shape is done. Let's do another copy. And it's also sometimes what I'll do is if I'm modeling something and I'm going past what I call the point of no return, I'll just like duplicate it and I might keep it in the same place or something and just hide it. So um, for this, I'm just sliding it over. So if it is like this and you like it, you can just always go to edge mode. So like all these edges, shift right click, do a bevel edge. Segment to two or more. Hold on this fraction. Let's give it a three. So now I have like a nice little ledge like that. And then let's say I wanted to stick out more. What I can do is I can go into, I'll just go like this sort of. So this is basically using the four-way view. You're just kind of doing it. I mean, this might be a little bit more advanced, I guess. But if I isolate the selection, sometimes I just line it up. And then I'll just make a box selection. Let me get some points, vertexes. Select all these. Or you could have done this before the bevel, you know, to get this kind of effect. And I'm not going to build out a stove right now, but you would just kind of build that a little bit separately and fit that in there. But when you come across that, or if you come across that, we can deal with that. Um, this right here, this is like a cabinet has a split in it. So what I can do is I can, um, like I said, I'll do this two different ways. I could try to eyeball it with this knife and say, all right, I want to split right here, split right here. And um, Q to quit. I can take this right here. So I'm gonna select this face. I'll press four. Select this face. Hold on Shift and double click and get this full edge loop. Press five. And I can maybe scale this down and Shift right click and do a bevel. No, no. Do an extrude face. Hold on Control. Bring it in a little bit. Back on object mode. And then I can like kind of take all of these. So I'm press four just to see what I'm doing. Just selecting all those points. Just R to scale. Kind of like scale it in. That can be your thing. Then, or another way, well, I'll just show you what it looks like with the bevel, edge, select all these. And don't do the bevels right away. You gotta do them like when you're like completely 
done with the shape of the object. Like bevel is a last step thing. So I'm just doing this right here just to show you what it looks like with the bevel and without it. Right. This one right here also has a top. So what I can do is I can take this control D, kind of raise this up. But the ideal thing would do would you know to do would be to take this and then do a control D before you do all the beveling and all that stuff before you do all the cutting because then this it makes this a lot easier to work with. I'll center the pivot, and all I have to do is like just make this small, scale it up a little bit, and then when you place it on your object, and for these cubes. Just always good to bevel to a more cube quit. Then you have that top part. So this one I've already got those like edge loops in there. And as always, if I did want to delete it, but like I said, it's better when you're doing something like this just to put it there top because it's like completely on top of your object of course you can fake it and place it there yourself but that's all just all on you so i'll double click this you know it's not even worth it to like take this and try to like make it into this you might as well just do it off uh in the beginning if i want to have some handles on this all i got to do is get myself a cube Raise this up, bring this out, press F to focus in. This back part, I'm not gonna really see. So I'll just take this face right here just like this and I'll delete it. I don't really care too much about it. And then just scale it down, place it right here. Place this down, control D, I'll raise this up. So we have two of these. Actually, to keep the theme going, I'll select this one. I'll just isolate it real quick. And you see what I'm doing? Double. Because remember, the shapes, once the shape's down and you're not going to change it anymore, you can go ahead and bevel it. And it would be silly to make another one and then bevel. So I'll just make it in its final form and then I'll bevel it. So let's say you have this right here. What I'll do is now is I'll make myself a cylinder. Like this, drag it out. Vertexes. Select these. All right, I have this. Now also bevel the top of this. Why well, should give it some more edge loops? Let me do a subdivision. I'm not edge loops. Um, I see, look, I altered it too much before um, so that menu went away. And that's why it was looking real crazy when I did that. Just do like 32. And speaking of cylinders, I'll show you another thing. So there's two kind of ways we can uh, deal with this. So if I select this right here, I can go here and let's say I change this to 60, right? So this has got 60 divisions. And I double click on this edge right here and I shift, double click on this edge. Then I go shift, right click, double edge. Let's go to fraction. So let's say I'm doing a fraction of 0 0.02 and I'll give it three segments. Now we see what that looks like, all right? 0 0.02, I gave it three segments. Now this one has less, uh, we'll just have like 20. If I go here, select this edge, shift, select this edge, shift right click, bevel edge. Now I'll do the same thing.
zero two. All right, zero two. Now I'll do three segments. So we see what this one looks like right here, right? How it's jaggedy, jagged, jagged, jagged all around. And this one is a bit smoother all around. But if I press three, because we have something called control edges and we're support edges, if I press three on this one, it looks just as smooth as this. So all I did was a subdivided with three. So one, two, or oh, two just shows the subdivision and the soft version at the same time, subdivided version. So I can do that both ways. Now, let's say I want to scale this down to make it, what happens if I select both these? I press R to scale. It should stay in the same place, okay. But if I want to make my handle now, just right click, go to vertex, W to move and drag this thing down. You know, I'll just delete this. I'm just going to use my four way view. Scale down a little bit more. I can just take it. Place where it needs to go, vertex. Spacebar. Go to this brute. Do you press F to focus in? Okay, just happen to get it right in the middle. And it looks a little bit big. It's cool. We'll just scale it down. Now we have this right here. And if these are too big, I mean, but this is what your reference is for. So they're definitely too big for my reference, but it's too big, too small. You just, you know, take these points and from where it needs to be. If it's protruding out too much, stick, I mean, select all everything and kind of push it in. And there we go, we have ourselves a handle. And of course, we're not gonna make this all over again. So every time we have a handle, we can do control G and we can do like handle. Well, you know what I would do actually, I would select this and I would type in um, bar and then I don't know what you call this. Well, let's keep it as cube. And this will be one handle, but then I'll just duplicate it, uh, control D center this pivot and move it over here or wherever it's supposed to be you know but that's what the reference is to just have a guide to look at where these things are supposed to be so look we already have this already going for us this kitchen has a top that kind of like um moves along like with some other uh shelves so we just take this right here, move this over. I can do a control D. We can push this back, let's say. So let's say you have shelves like this. And these shelves kind of go down a little bit so we can, wait, let me go to the vertexes, select all these, pull these down. Like I said, I'm just looking at the reference, getting this. Press four, let me select these handles, deselect the shelf. Just leave that. Then it also looks like these, control D, center the pivot, these. 
down as well. I'll just go to my four-way view. All right, nice. Now, if I did have a, um, a top part to this, one thing we can do is get ourselves a cube. Where these faces, drag this up. Drag this over here. And so let's say I wanted to cover this too. I'll just go get my knife tool, select right here, Q to quit, select this face, control E. I'll move this out. And then now I can, let me center the pivot just to do it. Scale this down. Place it here. Go to edge, select all these, shift right click, bevel edge, and then go segments, two or more. And as always, if it's too short or too long, just grab these points. You just have to, you know, be intelligent when you select them. Make them how they want to be, or how you want it to be. So I can select these edges and move this over. But the main thing is with these, you want it to be consistent. So you don't want to be this to be super far over and then that be short, unless your reference has that. So let's say that is like that for whatever reason your reference. You want to grab these, match them up, be consistent. Cool. All right. And so this would be the same process as we make for countertops too. So you take this, drag it out, scale it down, scale these out. And then it's the same thing. We're taking vertexes. I'm just moving this. I'm press four. So like these over here, press five to bring it back. And we have this now. Now I'm just looking off of this reference, control D, but I'm also moving fast. So I'm not doing everything 100% uh, perfect. I want to check this out. This has some uh, vertical handles, right? I mean, some um, uh, horizontal handles. So one thing I can do is I can go in here and grab, say, this, shift this one. Actually, this is a group right here. So this is what I'll do. I'll just grab this. I'll just duplicate this group, control D, move this over here. Instead of trying to pick those out and do some other stuff, I'll just take this one. Since I made myself a new group, select these objects. And then if we look in this group, I'll just delete them. Then I'll take this one. You know, name this horizontal, press E and then J. And then I'll turn that 90 degrees. And then I can place it over here. I'll place it inside, press F to zoom in. And I'll place it wherever it needs to be. If you happen to have a cabinet that has some shelves, you can fake a shelf, which would be, um,
taking this up. Really just making this thin, placing it right here. Vertex, vertex. So we have ourselves this right here. And of course, you know, the theme, edge, shift. Since I like my shape, two or more, Q to quit. And then I can just place this on my object. Do control D. Move it down. If you have something like a knob, you can just take our sphere. And I'm just freestyling this one. I don't think I've, uh, I'm not looking at any reference. Do something like this, scale this down, pull this up. Let me take these right here. Remember, we can get also get vertexes as well. Same thing. Kind of like move it like this. If it did have like a edge that needs to be bevel, we can do just do shift, just double click to get those edge loops, some segments on it, see the fraction and make it tighter. Like this. Go down J, and let me just press three to smooth it out. So we have this, and then we can just place this where it needs to be on our object. And with these kitchens, when you make one, you can just duplicate the other one over. So this right here. Control D. Move it over. Now we have that. Another thing, let's say you have a, um, a shelf that has, hold on, let me go to this one. The bevels, right? I would make this out of a different object, but let's just do this. Well, Let's say I want this one to have um, those bevels. Control D, drag this out. I'll just select this face because this is the only one I want and I'll go to select inverse. So it selects everything else, delete that. I'll go to my edges, double click, Control E and drag these back. So it's a little bit open, but that's fine. Now, if I have something with Bevels, I can do shift right click, extrude face, go to my offset, drag it in. You can press G, you can like push it in, R to scale. And then I can do uh, G to repeat the extrude function again. Drag this out again. G, and then push it out, scale it. G again, offset. It just depends on how it looks. Offset, G. And I can also do this, offset, control, scale it in, G, control, G, control, G, G. You just have to count how many it is on your reference. And if I select this right here and I do a shift, double click, we have this full loop. I can press my W, push it in. Let's say for whatever reason this comes out, shift, double click. We have this, and we can do a control E and bring this out. Put on control for the thickness, it's controlling how much it's going in. And the offset is controlling how much it tapers in. So I'm just holding down this offset. So this is what I made right here, control D. And as always, if we want to make extra look extra nice and smooth, 
because these are square shapes. We can select the whole thing, shift, right, click, bevel. Ooh, get bevel. I did not bevel. That wouldn't work. It's supposed to bevel. I maybe made it too fast. But if yours has a specific bevel, I can uh, definitely show you how to do it. Somewhere I did something too quick. Because these edges right here are definitely supposed to bevel. Hmm. So yes, I guess, I guess if that's specific to... Um, Your model, I can correct that. I mean, I can do, you know, a more controlled example of a bevel. More specific example, I guess. By the way, I did this incorrectly just because uh, the bottom ones I didn't select as well. So yeah, you do something like this and then select your object center this pivot w move it in right here r to scale scale it in and then we have that right there and let's say the other sides beveled like this control d and pull this over Go to vertexes, grab these top ones, and then just scale it down. So now we have this. Let's set this. If you select one part of a group, so let's say I'm just selecting the cylinder, just you know, randomly selecting, and you press the up arrow on your keyboard, it gets the whole group. So I'm just basically showing you different ways you can make shelves. F. And however this is supposed to go, we can, like I said, take this, pull it over. And we stick our cylinder, grab these points. Place them where they need to go. Or how our reference tells us. But the main thing is just to have your reference so you know exactly what you're gonna do. So there you go.